probably about 20 minutes out from the gym. And then we can actually get this arm day started. So I have been liking doing a superset, or maybe not a superset, but let's just call it an alternating style for arms. So rather than doing like, you know, all the triceps first and then all the biceps, I've kind of been liking going back and forth a little bit. But, and you know, we'll see. I'll, I'll kind of decide what to do once I get in there. One thing that I can tell I haven't been doing as of late is really overloading my triceps. Look, I love a nice squeezing set. I do get a good tricep pump from it, but I really think that my triceps end up blowing up from me doing like, you know, fucking a full stack of pushdowns with like two or three plates slapped onto the side of it just to really fucking have something to manhandle. So today I definitely want to get some really heavy pushing done with triceps. But contrary to that, I think I've been liking being a little bit more, you know, let's just say, resourceful with my weights for buys, right? AKA, you know, not having to try to curl the 80s for every set and instead, you know, hitting the 50s. But as much as I say that I can't help myself but do heavy SS and curls, they feel fucking sweet though. You know? So other than that, We'll just have to see what's open. You know, if, if it's kind of packed in here, then that's going to make me a bit more likely to just hit all of triceps and then all of buys. Because, you know, let's say that the cables end up being a rare commodity and you got to wait for them. I don't want to use them for one or two sets, leave, and then have to come back and wait again. You know, you kind of have to be a little bit selfish in a way and sort of hog them. Or, you know, just work in with somebody. But no matter what order your arm day is, all buys, all tries, a back and forth, I definitely like having a dedicated arm day. Uh, and not just because I don't like splitting arms up, like hitting chest with tries after, I like that, I got no problem with that. But what kind of fucks with me is doing back and then buys. Because I can never really get an awesome bicep pump. I wonder if it would be maybe not the worst idea to do biceps first on a back day and then do the rest of the back workout. I'm not really sure. Because what will happen is, let's say I do back. By the time the back workout is finished, I've kind of fatigued my biceps, but not really in like an awesome way. Like they're maybe just a little bit pumped from doing all the rowing movements but they haven't really gotten any actual working sets done. So if I were to try to do a bicep day after that, I feel like I'm just hitting them when they're in a compromised state. You know, So maybe to fix that, I should kind of swap them around. Yeah, I'll see. Hard to say. But like I, well, not like I said, but like I kind of always bring up, a lot of this stuff is real nuanced and niche info and like only minor differences. Like you didn't, just doing one split over another one, as long as you have like an evenly distributed, let's just call it a, let's just call it an evenly distributed split, where you're not like hitting chest back to back. Obviously, if you're doing something like that, where you're doing the same muscle group for multiple days in a row, I don't think that's necessarily the best case scenario. Actually, I'd probably go so far as to say that's probably going to be counterproductive. If not, maybe just enough to be maintained because once you hit something you do want to chill and let it recover while you hit other shit but as long as you have like an evenly spread out split like a push pull legs or like an arnold you know who gives a shit right apart from the fact that maybe you'll get bored with one so you want to change it up just to have you know, more variability with your training so you don't get tired of it i don't think it's a big difference man you're not going to do the arnold split and then see your buddy do a push-pull leg split and have him like blow the fuck up and have you stay the same size as long as you guys train and eat the same. You know, if anything, the actual split itself, I think it's kind of just, it's one thing, it's one aspect of, I say lifting, but I'd say that 
if you're a basic lifter, you're pretty much a bodybuilder, right? That's the whole point. You're trying to build muscle. But let's just say lifters, like the split, your workout split, it's an aspect of lifting that just gets so much emphasis for no fucking reason. You know, people are going to be much better off. Well, uh, fucking coyote just ran across the highway. But you're going to be much better off actually focusing on you know, your training, the actual training itself when you're in the gym rather than, okay, what should I do today? Uh, because there's dudes who don't even have a fucking training split. They go into the gym and they do chest, and then they think, okay, I did chest yesterday, I guess I'll do arms today. And then they're like, oh, well, I did arms yesterday, and then I did chest two days ago, I guess I'll do legs today. And they just kind of, you know, go into the gym and do whatever they haven't hit for a couple days. The underlying factor, which is really going to determine whether or not you actually make a gains, apart from diet, which actually is probably the underlying factor which is going to affect your ability to gain or lose weight. But apart from that, it's going to be your training intensity. You know, I see dudes doing some fucking, uh, especially on social media too, not people have actually seen it in person, but I'll see some wacky ass shit. From my point of view, that's what I see it as, you know, like uh, doing 20 sets for every body part, every lift, or... Like, if I saw somebody doing a full body workout daily, you know, in the context of muscle growth, I, I'm, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't do that. Right? That's why I don't do that. But these guys still look the part. They still have a fucking pretty solid build to support the fact that what they've been doing has been working for them. Right? And what should that tell you? Oh, well, they're just a fucking, they're an outlier. They're a genetic outlier. They... They're the only ones that can make that work. Look, maybe. But that's like a fucking point zero zero one percent whatever. Right? The majority of people are gonna make the same gains from the same sort of training. So the way I look at it as or the way I look at it, you can fucking train however the hell you want. But as long as you train hard, and I mean like actually hard, to the point where people around you know that you're training hard. It's going to be hard not to make fucking gains. If I took some random schmo, or let's just hypothetically put a dude in the gym, and for whatever reason, he just has the fucking mental capacity to go in and do like 10 sets of bicep curls of on like any machine or whatever. Let's just say he only does dumbbell curls. If he did 10 fucking really hard sets with as much weight as he could do for like 10 reps, he's going to build a big ass set of biceps. And same thing if you put a dude on a fucking bench press, told him, hey man, 10 sets, 10 reps, hard as you fucking can, failure every time. I think he's going to build a pretty substantial chest too. Now I'm not saying that's the perfect method of training, right? That's why I add all this other sort of, you know, silly shit and rep schemes and whatever and drop sets because I think it's going to, you know, give me an edge. But the guy who trains hard doing one fucking exercise for his whole movement, is going to beat the guy who's training like a fucking wuss doing the most scientifically studied, you know, muscle stimulating styles of sets, right? So, really, what I'm trying to say is the more of a fucking nut you are with your intensity, the better your results, right? The harder you hit something, the more of a fucking crater and the more of a dent you're going to leave it. And if you kind of relate that to how your fucking muscles work, the harder you hit them, right, can actually cause, let's, let's just call it stimulatory damage. Obviously, if I sat in here and tried to do like a hundred sets of chest with no breaks, I'd probably like put myself in rhabdo, right? Like that's what happens when, you know, David Goggins ultra marathon runners run like that. But that's not you, right? Do not worry about that. In no way imaginable, are you going to go to the gym for two hours? And I'm saying two hours is like a long training session and really fucking go hard on a specific lift. Like lift being you know, a body part or two body parts. You're not going to overtrain. If you go home, eat your food, go to sleep, wake up the next day. If you're too sore to hit that body part, which you probably will be, just fucking hit something else. And then once, like let's say you absolutely thrash chest 
harder than you ever have before, harder than you ever thought you could, you're definitely not going to hit chest the next day. You're probably not going to hit chest the day after that. But you give it a couple days, once your chest isn't sore anymore, who cares how sore it was right after the workout? Now it's good. Hit it again just like that. And that kind of turned into a there's no such thing as overtraining speech. But you get what I'm saying. Go hard. See some results. So I'm going to try to weave through traffic because I don't want to wait too long for the pre to kick in. I want to kind of get there right as it's sort of ramping up. And then we can jump to whatever first, whatever the first movement ends up being, which really I could not tell you because it's going to fucking depend on what's open. So let's, uh, let's just wait and find out what that is. All right, stack. Oh, fuck. Oh, well, whatever. Okay. Stack. And this is a heavy stack, too. Usually, a standard dumbbell stack is going up to, like, 200. This is 250, plus a plate, plus a 25. This will be a good one. Of course, I've warmed up. If I just try to jump straight into this, I'm sure I could move it but my elbows would be on fire. So I think I might, it's not too busy. I think I may just try to camp out and see if I can hold onto this cable for a while and still do my back and forth style. But no point focusing on anything else but this set that's right in front of me right now. Oh. Oh. No. 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 Oh my god. Okay. I like the feeling of that. I haven't done a heavy fucking set of push downs for a while. Let's do some curls and then just run it back. Let's make the 75s feel light. That's a good opener. Back to push downs. Let's just repeat, back to curls. No more of those. Next will be like 
I don't know, maybe some kind of preacher or something, but let's go back to heavy push downs. I added a 25. I hope I don't fucking break my toe when it falls off. But I, that's pretty solid to me. Let's lose the 25. But I wouldn't mind doing every set fucking heavy like this. I think I might actually do that. I, I think I've been doing a little bit much like squeezing shit for triceps. I really just want to beat the shit out of them today. I did a feeler rep with a 60 pound dumbbell. Too friggin' much. 50s will be good. So single arm basically to failure, obviously as many partials as I can do without ripping my biceps off. I'll probably just do like assisted partials, but then back to heavy ass pushdowns. I'm locked in heavy pushdowns this whole lift. Just one of those, that kind of felt like shit. Let's do Preachers next. I mean, still a good set, but I don't like the feeling of it enough to do another one. Back to pushdowns and then, I think let's, uh, let's do a set of concentration curls or something. No. Yeah, you I might have to lose the 25 in the next one. Back to concentration curls. I'm thinking a set of concentration curls next. You know, I think I know what my problem was with those preachers is uh, the pad was too shallow. Usually I want that arm pad at like maybe 45 degrees or so, but that one was like kind of high up. So I almost felt like I was fucking, I don't know. The strength curve, I just didn't love it. But something like concentration curls, it always does me right. That one felt pretty good too, but I still don't really want to do another one of these. 
I lucked out. Triceps, I just get to do the same movement over and over again. But buys being a little bit more sticklery in terms of my exercise selection. Maybe some easy bar curl next, but let's go back, throw some shit around on the push down, and then think about what I want to do. Right. Not an awful approach to just try to fucking focus on the meal in front of you, or the set right in front of you, before thinking about what you're going to do later in the lift. might do one more heavy like that and then as much as it does feel good I do want to get at least a little bit of a mix of these heavy fucking brutish sets and maybe something lighter and really squeeze hard but either way I'm pumped as well on the way to fucking complete let's get the 110s going 110s for preachers like sure it is just the equivalent of 55 pound dumbbells but I feel like these sets I can go a little bit harder because when I do dumbbell curls, I do one arm at a time and the other one gets a full rep of rest before going again. Or as with an easy bar, I mean, I guess I could do both dumbbells at once, but that's just not how I like it. But with an easy bar, I both at once, just constant fucking exploding of the buys. I'm, I'm just saying the most random analogies. This feels good. I'm going to go hard on it and then go back to pushdowns. Um, <laughs> 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 I was trying not to swing that too much at the end. I think I'm going to come back to this. Let's go do pushdowns, come back. And honestly, arms might be done with that. Let's make this one a lighter squeezing set. So instead of just trying to push as much weight as possible, this is a weight which I can actually do good full reps with and squeeze at the bottom. Because even if you're not doing a fucking set, if you sit here and flex your tricep hard enough, after half a second, it's going to start fucking burning. So I'm trying to add that stationary flex to the bottom of every rep of these single arm pushdowns. Trying to get myself some assistance. Let's go do one more set of easy bar curls and decide if we needed one more round or if we're going to call it there. Oof. Oof. 
Okay. I want to do one more. One more push down and one more curl, and then we could be done. I just don't feel fully pumped yet. None of this extra plate mumbo jumbo. Simple full stack, squeeze at the bottom, a couple of the parcels at the end. Yeah, triceps are fucking destroyed. I think let's do a light squeezing set for buys. And go check this fucking pump. Okay, one set of curls, strapless, 45s. This will be a good ender. Toward the end of the lift, I feel a little bit of a... A little bit of a privilege, because I don't have to do anything complicated. Like, my arms are already destroyed. So I don't have to try to do, like, crazy weight... And I don't have to try to squeeze insanely hard. Of course, I'm still going to try to squeeze and make it a really hard set and go to failure. But once you've already kind of developed a pump, you're almost in an uphill battle. Or no, no, a downhill battle where you can kind of throw anything at whatever you're hitting and you should feel it. I'm not saying just do mumbo jumbo random shit, but I could do a set of dumbbell curls or a set of easy bar curls again or a set of cable curls or a set of like bicep focus pull downs underhand. No matter what kind of curl or bicep movement I do right now, I know it's gonna burn like hell. So all I gotta do is bring it. And then we can go find some cool lighting and see how we're looking. Let's go pose down and get out of here. All right, the music is kind of loud in here, so in post when I edit this shit, Sometimes it'll be loud enough that I've got to like add some extra like noise reduction. So if some of these clips sound a little funky, that's why. But arms fully pumped underneath the hostile thermal sweatshirt. Dude, this is fucking sweet. This is the kind of shit I'd see at Goodwill and I go, holy fuck. Awesome find. I'm taking this. Oh my goodness. But. Who cares what the fuck you're wearing over top of your pump as long as you got a gnarly ass pump underneath. That's what really matters. So how many sets was that? Eight? I can't really, I can't really remember. Because I didn't necessarily have a specific number of sets in mind when I did this lift. I was really just trying to get to a point of almost just satisfaction with the lift. So fuck man, if this took me 20 sets, that's what I would do. Luckily, it only took me about eight or nine or seven or whatever it ended up being. Which is about the volume that I think is necessary. Any more might not really be beneficial. And any less, I think you may be leaving gains on the table. Just a little. But we certainly look pumps for sure. <laughs> I mean, you tell me. You fucking tell me.
No. All right, what else is there? Fucking lat spread. Arms is a pretty simple pose down. There's only a couple of shots. Oof. <laughs> Dude, I fucking love being pumped. Oh my god. You know what? Try to name a better feeling. Try to name a better fucking feeling than a disgusting arm pump. Or a fucking head lightning leg pump. Right? Or a crowd separating lat pump. Or a fucking eye gouging chest pump. And anything in between. I don't know what the hell you like, but I know nothing's gonna beat that for me. So now, home, food, bed. A perfect end to a lift like this. Now that is a good freaking arm pump. Not that that really even needs said. I, st I still can't even touch my fucking, uh, my shoulders. Oh, this guy pulled it right in front of me. Fuck. That's what I get for playing on my phone for 10 minutes. Let's see. Is there anybody behind me that I'm going to hit when I back out? Don't think so. Yeah, that kind of sucks for me. I'll tell you what. I hate backing out of parking spots. It's so much nicer to pull through. Live and learn. Overcome and adapt. Very basic approaches to any kind of uncertainties but either way let's uh what was the pre-workout meal uh i fucking splurged a little bit wasted some money i ordered some kfc to the fucking house two large mac and cheeses a spicy chicken sandwich uh because i've got to pick a new place to get my sp my uh, my spicy chickens because wendy's just i can't do it it doesn't fucking doesn't agree with me because for, I mean, I could fucking just chow down on them forever. But now, dude, I eat one. And literally later that day, not even the next day, but a few hours later, I go to the bathroom and it just fucking hurts me. Hard to say why. It's got to be some kind of, it must be some sort of spice. That is my only logical conclusion. Because no other food does that to me. Very unfortunate. Right? So... If KFC does the trick, then maybe I'll have a new little post-workout staple. Because honestly, it tasted pretty good, too. It's kind of had that KFC flair from the, the seven secret spices. Is it seven? Whatever. But either way, that pre-workout meal, about maybe two and a half hours before I actually got to the gym. Uh, it was that. The fries were kind of, eh. The fries kind of sucked. I only had a few of those. So it was about 1,500 calories plus intra-workout. I was just slamming this juice I have. I've, uh, I've got some more CDX coming in, shipped straight out of Hostiles headquarters. They just got a bunch of, uh, like the Sam Sulik, the Blue Shark Gummy Pre. That got back in stock, and so is the CDX, which that's my preferred intra-workout carb. Because even though it is, you know, dissolvable in a drink, it doesn't just slam you in terms of your, uh, your blood sugar. Because it's a bit of a lower, like, in terms of a carb, it's lower on the glycemic index. So, obviously, if you have 50 grams of sugar, it's going to spike your blood sugar. And if you're not, you know, kind of used to that, I guess, uh, maybe just because of my size or the, the fact that I'm kind of active, or maybe just because I'm used to doing it. If I eat a ton of sweets, it won't, like, knock me out two hours later from, like, a sugar crash. But if you're really not used to that, like, drinking, the, like, juice and stuff, it's not necessarily awesome if you can't, you know, if the blood sugar kind of fucks with you. So the CDX, the cluster dextrin, it doesn't hit you so hard in the sense that it's more of a kind of a slow release. So I love sipping on that just all fucking day. Really, I need to fill my jug up with it, with like 200 grams, because that's an extra 800 calories that I don't even have to think about just from drinking my little drink. So once that comes in, we'll get back to, back to basics. 
Now the post-workout shake, I think that's also going to have to come back pretty soon. Because the only reason I really do that is because it's a very quick extra like 400 calories. And right now I don't need it yet. Right? I'm kind of saving that as like a, like a last resort in a way. Because I want to keep eating as much as I'm eating now. And then once my weight starts sort of plateauing and I hit a barrier which I just can't cross. Like let's say I hit 255 in the morning and I just can't get any heavier than that. Then throw the post-workout shake in, an extra 400 calories a day. That would probably do it. So don't worry, the post-workout shake will also return. Plan for tomorrow, legs. I don't know where I'm going to do legs, but wherever I end up doing them, it's going to be a good lift. Um, eh, well, no point talking about it now. We'll talk about legs when I'm actually doing legs. But those heavy pushdowns today, I definitely fucking like that. That's how most of my tricep training has been for a long time. And I sort of changed it to doing a lot more lighter biased sets. But... Nothing kind of beats the feeling I get from really throwing around a lot of weight for a lot of sets. So if you've been going pretty light on tries and maybe you, uh, let's say you don't have like elbow issues. If your elbows are just totally destroyed for whatever reason, then you're going to have to go a bit lighter just because heavy pushdowns, I mean, it's all fucking elbow. So I guess you're just kind of shit out of luck. But if you've been going light and really squeezing just for just because that's what you're used to. And I say load it up. Even at the cost of a little bit of form, at the cost of a little bit of maybe leaning over the cable and like forcing the weight down, the increased amount of tension that you're going to have on your triceps doing that actually really heavy working sets, dude, I think it's going to be fucking worth it. Right? Because at the extreme level, at the extreme level, what would I rather do? And I'm not saying this rhetorically, I'm saying this for me personally. Would I rather do my workouts all with really light weight and just squeeze it? Like, would I rather do a workout with just the 30 pound dumbbells? I could get a pretty good bicep pump with just the 30s. If I sat there, really squeezed it, made them really good sets, I could do it. But it's not gonna be my ideal situation. I'd rather throw around some really heavy dumbbells first and then work my way down so maybe having to use the 30s just because my biceps will be so fatigued by then that that's all I'll be able to lift. So for me, look, mass moves mass. So in my mind, if I want to get bigger, I've also got to kind of progressively get stronger. Not that that's my main goal. I'm not a fucking power lifter. But it's sort of just going to come along with the, with the process of building muscle. I mean, more muscle more size, more fucking fibers and larger fibers at your disposal. They're going to need more weight because you want to have a new stimulus for every lift. And that doesn't mean you have to do new exercises. That just means that every time you come into a lift in an ideal world, once you leave and come back, you come back with a vengeance and you're more intense and you're pushing yourself harder and doing your sets closer to failure than you did before. I try to do that every lift. I want every lift to be the most intense lift that I can do. And that doesn't necessarily mean every set I have to be like dying and screaming, but it does mean that if I know I have like three more reps in the tank on those pushdowns, then there's no way that I'd be satisfied to re-rack it knowing I could have got those three more. Right? I was just talking to somebody and he's like, you know, I've been doing a lot of strength training but I want to I want to increase my size, man. You know, I've been doing a lot of low rep work, like one to three reps on all my heavy stuff. I want to, you know, I'm trying to change my training up to, you know, get bigger. And he wasn't really asking me how to do it, but he was just kind of bringing up the idea. So I gave him my two cents. I'm like, dude, just do the same thing, right? Push yourself to failure, but instead of those one to three rep ranges, right? get up in like the ten to fifteen, even ten to twenty, you know. So. Again, sort of thinking about it from extremes. What is going to give you better results? Pushing every set that you do to absolute failure or doing every set with like 10 reps in the tank? 
Now that, in my mind, should be rhetorical. If I came into the gym and for a chest day I did 225 for 15 reps for like five sets and then maybe did like in four more sets of like cable flies or pec decks where I was going really light, just squeezing. Like, sure, I could get a burn on some of my reps, but, you know, just racking it after like 10 reps, even though I know I could have got like 100 fucking more. That's just not how I want to do it, man. That's, that's not what I think is going to work for me. You know? So I say fucking push it as hard as you can. Don't hurt yourself, of course. But to think that you're going to go wrong bringing more effort to the table and pushing your sets harder than you ever have before, to think that that is the wrong idea, dude, somebody has fucking infected your brain with a loser mentality. And ideally, you're going to be able to get in there, realize that, and I can kick that shit out of there and replace it with some Tom Platt's, Dorian Yates, fucking Kevin Lebroni, four-plate shoulder press, fucking old-school hardcore training and try to follow that mojo and that vibe. Because it's not like you see it all the time. If you go to a commercial gym, you do not see stuff like that all the time where people are really just being freaks and not even in the sense of just being a literal freak like a fucking 300 pound monster but in terms of actually training like there's no tomorrow you know so if you're not going to see that all the time in your day-to-day -day life or if you don't see that in your gym a lot right, don't be afraid to try to step up and be that guy you know, nothing is stopping you from doing a set as hard as the sets that your fucking heroes are doing, right? Your legends are doing. You know, when you see a set of fucking squats from Tom Platt's, crazy weight, crazy reps, there's nothing stopping you from doing a set that intense. You gotta remember, intensity is not a measure of weight. It's not a measure of strength. It's just a measure of exertion, which you can bring to a set, you know? So I can see a dude 300 pounds do a set of squats of like four plates for 10 reps and I can tell he had another 10 reps in the tank and he could just rack it. I'm going to be more impressed by the sort of maybe 180, 160 pound lifter even doing two plates but actually pushing his set to legit failure because in my mind that guy's training harder. So that's just sort of what I want to see in the world. And in that same sense, try to be the changes that you want to see in the world. If you want to see people in your gym training harder, why don't you start training harder? So I think that's a good little final message. Nice and motivational. But I'm not your dad, so just because I told you to do it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to listen. No external factor is going to be more powerful than you internally saying, Okay, let's take it up a notch. So, if that's you, push it to the limit. But that's enough of this little uh, little chit chat. Legs tomorrow, cardio in the morning. Oh, I gotta go back to class. Fuck. Well, what are you gonna do? So, don't let school get in the way of your training either. Make sure to find that muscle, work, school, life balance and keep it nice and fucking, well, balanced. So that's all I got. I'll see you next time.